Live from a grungy kitchen table located in Annapolis, Maryland's scenic and historic capital, it's the Maryland Crabs Podcast. With each episode, your hosts, Tim Hamilton, John Frenet, and the occasional guest will dive in and pick apart the stuff that really matters most to you. We're too lazy to actually solve any of these problems, but we can definitely stir the pot. From schools, politics, parking in the fire lane, to those horrible people who drive BMWs. And here with this week's episode, live from the kitchen table, Tim Hamilton and John Frenet. Hey, it's the Maryland Crabs. We're back again here. We are visiting West Annapolis, the lovely village of West Annapolis, where I understand there's two new restaurants opening up, Evelyn's and some Flemish thing, which I'm kind of excited about. Flamont is called. Um, but this is John Frenet. I've got Tim Hamilton across the table from me. And also with us, we have Patty White and Lee Anderson, who some people may or may not know. If you're in the film industry, you certainly do know them. Uh, if you've ever been to the Annapolis Film Festival, you do know them. And we're going to sit down and talk to them about the Annapolis Film Festival, which is coming up soon again. Uh, which is something everybody should be looking forward to. How are you guys today? We're doing We're just good. great. <laughs> <laughs> I never get over to West Annapolis. Well, now you, you have arrived then. It's you know, the we, little treasure of Annapolis. And we drive on the same side of the street here, right? So it's just it's not a problem. Oh, no, and no. We drive on the other side of the street here. <laughs> Everything's out of the box here. It's charming. I do like this. I mean, you got a nice office with a view out onto uh, Annapolis Street. Mm -hmm. uh, and parking. We have, yeah, park have park in here. Parking. That's the best kept secret That's of West right. Annapolis. I think some of the shops that are down here are just are very unique. Um, they're not, uh, unfortunately, there's a, a number of them that have left, but the ones that are here are very unique. It's not, and, I, and Main Street has its unique stuff too, but it's, it's hard to put your finger on it, but it's, it's, a, it's a neat place. I mean, yeah. you know, we've got a film production office Plus here. Parking enforcement doesn't come over um, here, do they? You know, parking. We've got the, you know, the, you know, the restaurants and it's, it's, it's nice. Antique can, stores. There's a lot mm -hmm. of antique stores and small the businesses. The upscale consignment. Mm -hmm. upscale. Bean Rush. Yeah, Bean, Bean Rush. Rush. <laughs> Life Great <saver>. coffee. <laughs> Lifesaver. Lifesaver. So let's talk a little bit about the film festival and, and, and you guys and what you guys do here. I didn't realize that you'd been here for 15 years in this location or something. No, uh, 10, 10, years. 10, 10 years. 10 years in this 10 location. Here we were in and it looks like before. managed chaos. I'm looking around and we have boxes <laughs> with filmsters projects and, come, and come, contracts. Come back and, in, in a month and a half and, <laughs> and see. I've, uh, calendars, yeah. It looks like you, you both are very calm, but it looks like uh, as soon as we're leaving, you're going to be in a frenzy. This is a good time for you to be here. This is the calm before the storm. We're always it, kind of managed chaos here. Well, it is. I, I jokingly, when I first came in, said this is the first time I've ever been able to like, see the floor when I come in here because it's usually like the week of the film festival. And there's like T-shirts hanging from the chandeliers. There's, you know, there's some, somebody's, staff trying somebody's to, screaming to from the back them. room, yelling, the phones are ringing and uh, trying to get it all together. Which like is a political campaign. I like that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, pretty close. Pretty Good close. Energy. Now, Filmsters is, is, is your company. And what, what do you guys do with Filmsters? Well, it's a, it's a full production company that we started many years ago, and um, we've been in business for... 21 years yeah, now? 21 years. You guys have always been partners? Um, well, we, we have. Yeah, we, yes, we've we always have. been partners. So, this is an interesting West Annapolis story now. Patty had a company called DMW Productions with two other partners in California before she moved back here. David Diesenfeld and Michael Miller, the D and the M, right. and she's the W. And then, like all production company stories, we met through our hairdresser at Morgan <laughs> Gerard. Yeah. Right we met next through door. our hairdresser at Morgan Gerard, and Michael both cut cut both of our hair, and he was the Yenta, and he put us together. We were the only two people he knew in this business, and we quickly developed a friendship. We were friends for about, we've been friends for 26 years, mm -hmm. so one day I left my other job. I called her on the way home. I said, I, I left. She said, good, come work with me. So we've been working together for 21 years. But friends for twenty six. Are you years. both? Are you both natively? Are you? Are you from here? Yes. And I, you, I'm not. You're not. But you came here like twenty some odd years ago. Yes, we moved from. Uh, I came via New York City. I was in the city for about okay. fifteen years, and then to L. A. And then here. Okay. You like the West Coast or the East Coast? Oh, I like it. I mean, I, I was raised here on the on the okay. East Coast. So I didn't like, like East LA. Coast Do you like LA? There is a really big difference. And when we were we produced yeah. Extreme Makeover, we would go into the LA office. There'd be like sixty employees running around, and we would learn about the young people. We'd watch people work, and we were we were she was senior producer, and we were producing on the road. But we'd go into the office, and I'd say, now that one, that one, that one has potential. And then we'd find out they were all from the East Coast. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I, I mean, I, there are things that I do like about L.A. And yeah, I've got two sons living there right, right. now, and you That'd know, one too. who loves it and one who <laughs> isn't wild about it, but his business, you know, sure. keeps him there. Um, and I, I think that it has a lot of advantages. But it's not necessarily in your blood the way it is here There's a different us. work ethic and sensibility on the East Coast. Oh my there God, are many yeah. people that mm-hmm. transplant that to the West Coast, thank God. Well, it was used to be, uh, we, because we were just talking before we, we started recording, because you and I both lived in the Southwest mm-hmm. for a little bit, and it would be the sort of thing, if, you know, we just we called you up and said, we want to have a podcast, we're going to meet here at 10, so we all moved, met here at 10, because right. that's what you do. Right. Out right. in the Southwest... <laughs> You have ten people, and maybe three might show up, and two by accident. It's just it was that. Hey, old, what's going on here? And right? they would just say, and, in L.A., they're they're out on on Venice uh, Boulevard, um, you know, riding their. But they will. They always say that we were so high strung. They're just like you guys got to relax. Gotta like, you got to show up to meetings. This is a you know that right. drove me crazy. This is the real deal. You 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 nailed it though. That's the best example I could think of. And I'll tell you too. It was because uh, I was in comedy for a bit, and the comedians on the East Coast have. I mean, it got to the point that you had comedians who would move from the East Coast to L.A., and they were worried that they would lose their anger, <laughs> so they would lose their edge. Oh and it, it's always just funny going, you don't want to be well-adjusted and relaxed because then you won't be as funny. But it's true. But you want to know it something? You know how many people from that live in L.A. now, that particularly in this industry, are from New York or the East Coast? They're from somewhere. everywhere. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. It's, it's, beca- it's a compilation of all it's of us. Yeah. It's I a colony. I remember yeah. one of the fun things when I first met Michael and David and went to L.A. to start working with filmsters that... Michael said, if you notice, there are no houses that are the same here because everyone that moved to L.A. built, when they made it, they built the house that was the most successful house of the person in the little hometown they lived in, and then they brought it to L.A. So it's the New England. Right. right. So it's everything, but it's it's their idea of making it, and that's why it all looks so different in L.A. Was it L.A. story when he's driving around? He goes, some of these houses are up to 20 years old. (laughs) (laughs) Ancient. (laughs) I don't know. I just, you know, when I first flew in once, uh, the first time I went there, I was in the cab, which cost around five thousand dollars because we just kept driving and driving, <laughs> and I just kept waiting to get there. And then I just dawned on me: there's no there to get to. It's no there. Yeah, there's no downtown. There's no. It just goes on Sprouls. for. It's one big strip mall. My favorite L.A. of course is Woody Allen's version of it in Annie Hall. Hall. When he arrives yeah. there and he can't see anything for the glare, <laughs> he's driving down the street. And what's his name? The guy Sunset driving, he's, he's got the hood on because of the yeah, sun. Because, exactly. Just... That That is, I still laugh every time I see that and it's one of my favorite movies and I still just <laughs> la- break into laughter. I know it's coming, but... And it, there's not a lot, I just I know it's stereotypical, but the authenticity of people out there. I mean, in New York and Boston they're, and yeah. they're real people for better yeah. or for worse, but out there it seems like everyone's hopping from one... I know it's a stereotype, but... Yeah. No, it's... It's, listen, we did an at plastic surgery show. We did Extreme Makeover for three seasons. <laughs> right. So you, you went to like the 10 times 100, you know, the, that yeah. level. Now, the people just... who did Extreme Makeover were not um, from L.A. They were from all over the country that we brought in right. and gave this opportunity oh. to. But the actual situation, the actual surgery and the recovery and all of that took place in, in a mansion out there that right. the show would rent. Right. You know? They lived in a mansion and... They, we spent somewhere between seventy and two hundred fifty thousand dollars a person for all of the things they needed between dental, plastic surgery, um, hair replacement, um, wow. everything. I, I will say that that this was not just for for um, oh I want to look better and I have a better nose. These were people who seriously needed. We feel most. like we brought deeper stories to that when we got involved in that because. It was just like, I need a nose job in the beginning. And then we found the stories of the cleft palates and the people that but, we yeah, restored their vain, hearing. It's right. not based on vanity. Right. No, so no, we, we did miraculous things. We restored mm-hmm. hearing and took someone to the symphony for the first time. And we had this boy that had oh, that's you know, really cool. fi- so, so 15 they had the botched... Co- uh, yeah, cochlear implants. Yeah. And, Do you, you ever got about that? Did you ever seen those videos of the people with the cochlear implants? And there's, there's a bunch of videos and you, like, you tear up on watching it. But someone, they'll be behind them and say, can you hear me? And they'll start crying and nodding. And I'm like, oh. But then I'm like, wait a minute. How did they know what they were saying? If they were, I mean, how do you learn language when you're deaf? That always bewildered me. I'll tell you, talk to uh, Jake Jacob And I just Landis. got a bunch of blank yeah. stares on that um, one. Yeah. I don't have the answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jacob Landis would be a good person to talk to on that. He's uh, Randy Landis's kid who has a cochlear implant. He got it yeah. recently. He did the bride across the country. Just raised money for other people to get it, which is really kind of interesting. Works at Whole Foods. Yeah. So but how long did you all do that? Um, three, seasons. three seasons. I mean, we had amazing stories. We had a guy that had 15 botched uh, cl- cuff palate replacement. He was from a family that was... A Jamaican family that at one point were homeless, living under the bridge in Miami. The mother was a nurse, and when he was the youngest, and when he was born, the father, he was so horrific looking with this kind of hole in his face 
the father abandoned the family. Oh. We had a and woman who was bitten by a spider. And it was in a bag of her husband when he came home oh, from, like a brown from the war. He was, he was a uh, um, you know an army um, right. vet, green beret, a green beret, and um, he he brought home this spider without no brown recluse, and it jumped onto her face, and just the poison that it put in her whole forehead well, and head. And the army realize. surgeons didn't couldn't do Mm-mm. enough, and she looked. She was a beautiful woman who had yeah. three great kids. And young, and she just was just a damaged. Disfigurement. Yeah. Well, we, our job when we went, we always were the ones, we're the fairy godmothers. We got to surprise people that they were getting an extreme makeover, and then we told the backstory, and then we did the reveal when they came home. And then there were different producers that just did steps in the surgery and stuff in LA because we were continually traveling around the country. So when we saw her, it was so bad. That we went outside and we called the dermatologist, doc, Dr. Shamban, and said, you've got to promise us before we promise this woman that you can really fix this because we've never seen anything this Oof. horrific. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And, and the thing was is that it was never going to be perfect, and we knew that when we agreed to do this. But we, we, what we decided is if it was going to change her life in a really big way, it was worth it, even if it wasn't going to be perfect. And not only did she look amazing, and it, it was really beautiful, but we also were able to sneak her husband from Afghanistan back into the country oh. and be there flights. at the reveal. And everybody, there wasn't a dry eye, even the cameramen were crying. You oh, know? 14, awesome. 14 flights around the world to get there, and the army did not approve it, and he had done already 20-some 20, 20 years in, and he said, I'm not missing this. So we hit him. We did it at Pinehurst okay. in uh, North Carolina. Right. And so he was hidden in another building, codenamed Harry Tasker. <laughs> <laughs> very yeah, we, had, we had we had some uh, some some fun and games. It was very stressful, and but I'll tell you one thing: that no matter what jobs we've done in the past, everything um, sort of feeds into a certain area for us, which is um, basically the human predicament. You know, we are always looking at what is going on with people in people's lives what's happening to them what change needs to happen in a place you know and and it's it's not sometimes it's political sometimes it's sociological sometimes it's anthropological um sometimes it's just basic down-to-earth people to people but we're trying to tell these people stories and we do it in documentary we do it in um even when we do corporate pieces we Mm -hmm. tell the stories of the companies yeah that's who we are Right. We are storytellers first. I think our first love, Patty will agree with me, is documentary. We like the true stories, but we also want to do true stories to the big screen. And mm-hmm. we've done a little bit of that and hope to do more. And honestly, it's uh, very rewarding. There's something therapeutic when you record people in a documentary and they might tell you about their aspirations or their hopes or their fears. It's documented, so they kind of have to live up to it. And it, in that way, it kind of helps them know someone's being accountable or their story's being shared so that kind of pushes them to be their best self. So you filmmakers mm-hmm. first or you storytellers first? This, it's one and the same. You can't be a filmmaker if you're not a storyteller. She's a filmmaker, she's a storyteller, she's a storyteller, and she's a filmmaker. No, but you, there it, are it, filmmakers that don't know how to tell a story. Lives. There are yeah. plenty of those. There, there are. It's but you, but you can't be you if you're a storyteller in any way. You know you can be a filmmaker if you learn the basics. You know if you're not a natural storyteller, you know it's hard to ever be able to make that work. That's why there are a lot of filmmakers who aren't they're storytellers, but they may not be great storytellers. And those are the films that sometimes don't resonate. They don't give the same meaning. Well, to the probably, audience. And that's probably something, I mean, you look to, obviously, when you, you do your summer camps, right? Yes. yes. You've, you've got, is that, that's for youth and yeah. young adults, mm-hmm. I would it say. It is. It's uh, something very near and dear to our heart. We turned 15 years old this year, so we're very proud to say we started this way back when we were using tape mm-hmm. and digital I learned a technology. Cool Oh, yes. That's right. I learned on film. Your guys are bonding. This is great. I love it. on that one. (laughs) And we're very strict. Even with 11-year-olds, it's all about the story first. So we they come in on day one we get about 72 kids every year we have three levels beginner intermediate and advanced and we hear pitches from every kid on the first day of camp it's so much fun they get up in front of the whole camp it's hilarious and pitch and, and pitch, pitch an story. original idea mm-hmm. two minutes they get now does now okay i'm i'm, I'm an 11 year old yeah, uh, sure. you, you, you can you can ask my girlfriend and she will attest to that <laughs> 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 um and i want to i want to come to films for summer camp okay and i've got a mm-hmm. i've got a 
I, I want to get into film, and I, I've got this great little story that I think is very compelling. I come and I pitch it to you, and you say yes. So, what, what do you all do you teach me in the in the camp? I'm just curious. I mean, do you soup like, to nuts? We teach you. I mean, about filmmaking. I mean, so we're talking you know, so, camera angles, yeah. to production to editing. To the, so the way we set this up, it's a very special program because it is an all hands on therapeutic experiential learning. Excellent program so the kids actually do it and we coach them through every step of the way so you go from the idea by the end of the first day beginners they know what film they're working on what their job is they're already doing an outline on the story they're sitting in a group with the writers their location scouting their casting the second day the next morning they get a tutorial on equipment lighting camera sound they get to practice they're shooting their first scene on tuesday afternoon they crash all the way through the rest of the week making the film when they're editing simultaneously so they're shooting all day they're running footage back and the editor is already cutting as they keep shooting what do you use to edit um for years we did final cut we've now switched the last two years to adobe premiere pro uh, which is not perfect it crashes a lot but adobe yeah (laughs) um and then we've had everything we've had avid and yeah. You know. I started on Avidnomics. Well, that was the first digital that I had before. I still so, love so Avid. So when, when, yeah. I, when I sort of saw you guys filming at the Gateway Florist last summer, and that, yeah. was, that was your... Our that was our advanced, advanced class. program. Okay, right. But that was your shooting day, I guess, presumably. Yes, that was our shooting day. More than day. one. So beginners are a five-day program. They finish a whole film in five days. It's wow. a five-day-minute film. Intermediate come Monday through Friday for two weeks. That's 10 days. And they make an eight- to 12-minute film at a little bit higher level and then advanced does the first weekend is an intensive writing workshop and then the second weekend when we don't have any other kids we go on location and we cast local actors and shoot like you saw us at gateway in the community let me just say something about the advanced program is um it's a very special program and you know, it, we we select the kids that go into it. Um, you, you know, as well, they the come up. Well, the ones that I saw were like dead serious. It was like, yes. you know, yeah, no, don't the, screw with me here, dude. I'm on a, I'm on a mission from God. The, these know? these are the kids that, for the most part, are really interested in exploring the possibility of going to film schools or studying things in college that are relatable to to this kind of to this kind of work. So when they come in and they get an opportunity to be on set, and it is really like being on a movie set um, for a short film. And when they're there, they take it seriously. They take their, they got their jobs. They take them very seriously. They're working with their supervising producers and directors that we bring in that uh, run these programs. Mm. We're on set usually, so they get a tremendous amount of information, and they really are are hands on. I mean, they're they're shooting the movie. They're behind the camera. There's there's a guidance. There's somebody telling them this is how. It would look better to frame the shot, but what's your idea? And they're they're really learning all the way. So it's one-on-one mentoring advanced program. So there are 10 slots, and each job has a professional coaching them. So we have a professional sound person that coaches the sound person, professional director, professional producer, professional writer, professional editor, professional... And you're handpicking these kids. Yeah, the kids are handpicked, but so then, you could, then they come we bring out of our in, camp a lot of time. They, yeah, they, they, they have to have an interview right, with us. But some of them come from the but outside. You, but it means that you have your eye on them. Like you, you're yes. picking out the ones. We will tell them at the end of their, advan- in their intermediate year if they're ready to go up. We will invite them, but if we know them. But if we also got a lot of kids that have never had that experience, and we have to know they're not going to let the group down because it is that serious. They're all really trying to strive for something that's festival-worthy, that will be a calling card for them to get into a top film school and you know enrollment at film school has gone up 400 percent in the last five years so they interview with us we Highly those those kids from the outside who haven't done our camp but want to be in the advanced program 16 to 18 year olds they have to come and do an interview with so us like a short college experience if you, uh, you know, a, we're a, a better hundred, how many 16 year olds do you know that get to shoot in 4k with an easy rig and six prime lenses I know a bunch, but I know a lot of people. But, but some of the film schools are getting to know who we are now, yeah. and they're understanding awesome. that the kids that are coming from Filmsters Academy have had an, a very special experience that other kids haven't what had. Any thoughts on film school? Because I'm, I'm a movie fanatic, like I guess a lot of people are. But mm-hmm. you know, so um, to me, whenever I see interviews with like you know uh, Spielberg or Chris Casey, the, the, the common thread is they're all like, "Well, I was making movies when I was a kid, and yeah. you know, like with an eight millimeter." And, right. So like right. those are the kids, and then they go to film school. Right. But then you have those people who, who don't and. And say don't need it, you know. Right. And, but there, it can always, be both ways. I mean, I, personally, I I like believe a stylistically that, way. Uh, that, like you know, for example, Spike Lee is that Spike Lee, who I'm a fan of for the most part. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, you you could tell he's a product of film school yeah, for, because oh, yeah. um, he's stylistically for the for not merely as a storyteller, but at, for from a cinematography sort of point of view. 
Um, whereas, you know, I look at he uh, developed a style, is what you're saying. Exactly. Like, through I can, school, you would, and, you'd be able to watch a movie and know, right, and and know and it's no. Spike Lee. And right. same way with Martin Scorsese and same with Spielberg. Spielberg, and, like, I mean, yeah. there there are a lot of them. And and to be honest with you, there are a lot of filmmakers and terrific um, filmmakers that have not gone to film school, but have had other experiences, other life experiences right. that have given him, them this edge and have a natural sense of style and you know and and cinematic vision but i think for the most part some kind of training in this field because some there, discipline. it there's the technology has to match the editorial piece and those two things are often separated in in the real world you get a lot right. of tech people who don't know anything about how do i editorially put a story together but to be a good filmmaker you have to really have an understanding a basic understanding of how it fits together so my kids are are uh, 11 and 12-ish around there. Oh, perfect. And, yeah. Come to camp, camp age. Summer. <laughs> but they, like, oh, geez. But they, um, they've, they've really gotten into movies, and they gotten into, I like classic movies and stuff. They've really gotten into that. And it was interesting watching them. Like We were watching To Kill a Mockingbird the other day, and I was, I was explaining to them about the camera angles in the courtroom scene, how important they were and what, yeah. what they indicate. Oh. And it was, you know, I, I took film classes in college, <clears throat> and that's when you learn about the cinematography and, what, and, the, and the actual style of the movie tells a story. Yeah, and when you're uh, going here, when you're going yeah. into these scenes and you see these super close-ups, right. you know, they're, 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 it's not a manipulation. It is a manipulation of a kind, but it's a way of bringing in the audience to a inside that person you know you're you're going into the eyes of the other person and they're trying to say this is this is where you got to get deeper into the soul of what's happening here and so it you know these this cinema these cinematographers have to be their guidance you know that it's they're guiding the audience into what to feel and think it's a movie's see. made in editing that that's where well, you know, well it's made before at way well, before an that. editor told me that yeah so. well that's <laughs> why no but let, let's put it let's put it this way it's made everywhere. It's made. it's made in the script because without yeah. a great script, you've got nothing. I call myself a writer, so I, I think that's well, where it's no, all it's made. No, it's really. If you don't have a good script, you can have everything else perfect and the movie falls flat. Production, if you have a crappy production, yeah. I mean, if there's doesn't not a cinematic the look <laughs> or you're, these shots, it, it doesn't feel fluid and it mm-hmm. doesn't have, a, then you might edit it great, but it's something is going to be missing. But if you've got those, those things going and you have a bad editor... You can still ruin everything. I'm so you think can, of a and movie. Acting, editing is so important. It, it, it is what drives the story home. I mean, it's what brings the whole thing into the package. It is. But, I mean, to get back to that original question of what do they learn in the program, mm-hmm. we set up our camp. It's very special. I don't think there's any other program in the country like it. We set it up like a giant movie set. So well, that was my que- that was yeah. my question. Where is there anything around the regional area that's not like this? Not like this. There are a lot of mm-hmm. little... There's Tech ID Camp, and I even heard Marilyn Hall is going to do a few classes here and there. But nothing like this. This is professional level. Immersion. And immersion. Mm-hmm. And we basically have departments, like on a movie set. So there's the operations department. Then there's camera department, lighting department, sound department, special effects department, writing department, acting department. We have wardrobe, props. Yeah. And the kids go, and we have all of these staff that are outfitting them for their costumes, and they're talking about what their character looks like, and they're doing. And then we pass them to the makeup station, and they get the makeup on, and then they. And we have you know, stunt stunt we coordinators, have stunt coordinators. That come in and they, they yeah. fly them in front of green streams, screams, and screens, and and I mean it's really uh, it, you just don't see this kind of thing. The kids, twelve year old and thirteen year old kids, are getting to participate in. Right, and and you guys provide like the equipment to do this too. Right? Everything. It's a very crazy and very yeah. costly venture. Every we're si- year we're silly. And and to do this. the other piece, and a lot of people don't know, and and we're gonna, we'll say it, but we don't want a lot of inquiries about it because now we work through some other partners. But okay, so nobody listen. We've been <laughs> we're very proud to say that in 15 years we've been able to scholarship over 100 kids to film camp. Wow. Most yeah. of them are kids of color that never have these creative opportunities. So mm-hmm. one of the greatest things about our camp is it's a, it's an equal playing ground. It doesn't matter what neighborhood you're from, where you got your sneakers, what your dad does. It's all about ideas, about and idea everybody and can thoughts. compete awesome. about. And we've being had a creative partnership. Have- Great the Boys and Girls Club over the years. And, and all primarily from the area? Like uh, yes and no. Last yeah. year, I mean, we've had international students. Uh, we try to find, if kids are from out of state, we try to find a host family that would allow the students to stay with another student's family. Yeah. Nice. I mean, they well, come primarily from 
from this region, um, but it's it's expanding to Virginia and Delaware. We had people driving in from Delaware, and sometimes the parents will get a little hotel room downtown yeah. and stay okay. for the week while their kid goes to beginners and enjoy town. So yeah. we're bringing economic uh, <laughs> nothing nothing wrong with that so let's talk a little bit about the film festival where yes. it came from and then we'll sort sure. of wrap it up and talk about this year's film festival great but now the Annapolis Film Festival okay you guys have been making movies here in Annapolis for forever and you guys were out drinking one night doing shots and I was like, let's do a film fest and that's how it came about right <laughs> no and then, then somebody said, how it came about idea? Well, sort of like how this podcast came about <laughs> that's how I got married it really came that was about a, because that was a really stupid idea <laughs> Lee and I were on the on the festival circuit ourselves with our own documentary um, in the early 2000s it and uh, it's a long a tr- story a, tr- <laughs> a troubled a troubled yeah. kid that got caught up in the juvenile justice system. Yeah. It, there's a whole Jamesy Boy. Jamesy Boy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, it, it we was doing the, it was I the pre Jamesy Boy story. You know, okay. So it was James like Star Wars story. three to Star. Wars. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it was the real it, story. It of was James. The two. It was number two of the trilogy okay. of, of this t- story. So, so um, we did really well with that film. We won a ton of awards all over the country, in places like Seattle and other big festivals. So, we ended up in Colorado Springs, Colorado, which we got invited because we were women filmmakers, and they do a. Rocky Mountain Women's Film Festival. So we thought, well, we'll go, you know. We're women. We can do that. It was the coolest thing because the whole town was involved. And it was about the same size as Annapolis. And we have the Naval Academy and they had the Air Force Academy and they had the mountains and we have the bay. And it was about the same population. And they have Colorado College and we have St. John's. And we thought, this is really interesting the way they're doing this because I don't think we had seen it so immersive in a community before anywhere. And the women that volunteered and ran it were awesome. So that kind of became our model. We kind of said, Be awesome. Well, we want to bring something back here. It's, you know, I mean, Annap- tra- Annapolis was Colorado Springs, you know, I, in, yeah, I, in I a, totally in a see very the parallels sort of way. On there. But it was not just that. It wasn't just that festival. It was it it was just the whole touring around and seeing how um, Annapolis really was a destination city for a film festival. And as much as we loved the arts here, we hadn't really. Um, embrace them in the way that these other communities had embraced them. Yeah, I think you're being I'm kind. Just... I, I, I don't think the art scene here is. Uh, I, was, I was being kind. Yeah, with, with Mary well, Hall. Yeah, it, and, it's, and, it's good. Right. But I mean, you're but... right. It needed something. I, can't... I, I, I will say that. You know, the art scene was was struggling here. I mean, you know, you had Linnell over at Maryland mm-hmm. Hall that was doing what she could to, you know, raise money for windows. Right. Um, right. You know, Brian would throw some things in 49 West and right. have somebody with a thing. And, and, it, and the really fine struggling. artists had their You know, you had the and... same musicians playing the same bars, everything. Right. And, and that was right. sort of the extent of it. Right. But I, I will say that I think that since the film festival has come in, you've really yeah. taken a leadership role in expanding that. I mean, we look at, right. you know, I mean, we've got murals that the city is suing over right. now. For, well, we, we opened the floodgates, uh, I think, because what, what happened is, is that because we knew there had been a previous film festival here as well mm-hmm. um, that we said if we're coming in and we're going to be the Annapolis Film Festival and people have already had little bits and pieces of these kinds of things um, we better come in big so we had said from the beginning you know it's um, go big or go home and this is was our vision from the beginning that we had to establish a festival that was going to reach all of Annapolis, that it wasn't going to be just for one group of people, no. people who were interested in the arts. It yeah, had word to be one, for we're the, talking to you. <laughs> well, it had to be for diverse audiences. Right. right. It had to be on you know subject matters everywhere. It had to be able to bring in everyone in our community and make them feel wanted and that, that it would be accessible for them and affordable for them. And these were all things walkable. we had to think about. Yeah. Walkable well, and and walkable, accessible, affordable, right. and programmed for all populations. That, that was like the, our mission. Right. Keeping things dry. And that's a good and, point about the arts in this town is I never thought about it is that, you know, what Linnell does at Maryland Hall is great. You know, I like ballet. I like opera. Sure. But, but it's we all niche. do. Well, no, we all don't. Yeah, that's the problem. Is but that that you don't have anything that appeals to to everyone? Everyone in an, and you can't be everything but, to everyone. But, but I mean, that's what this is. That's what this film festival does. Yeah. And every year we work harder to to sp- broaden that perspective. You know, as we program and bring in other things connected to programming, like panels and special events guests. and whatever, we, special guests. We're trying to broaden it so we are including. Our population, and not just our community, but our county, and then our state, and then our Mid Atlantic right. region, and you know that's it, that's it what's doesn't happening. do us any good to do. I mean, this is an incredible, enormous amount of work. You you know that yeah. there, there's 
a handful of us to put it together. It's essentially 77 different events over four days. We use 19 venues now. We have five screening venues. We have a lot of community partners and a lot of in-kind support that enable us to do this. But beyond that, the idea that this is for everyone, I don't think that's really been done in a broad way. And I think you've done it very well. Here. I mean, I, the years, and I, I've attended Thank very you. minorly the first year, and in a more major way as as mm-hmm. you're the second, okay. third, and fourth year, uh, we're rolling into the fifth year. But I mean, I, I see more minorities. I see young kids that are that are very interested in doing that. Which, you know, I know, you know, as I, as a kid, I'd be like. <sighs> Film festival, jeez, mom, what the hell are you thinking? Um, but I'm, I'm seeing that. I'm seeing young. I'm seeing old, uh, and and it's a very friendly event. I find you know people are passing on the street mm-hmm. and, and whatnot, and it's educational to me because my experience with films has been sitting in a theater watching what go and and as I'm talking to people, as I'm seeing things and how things develop, you get the you know the directors that will have a little talk beforehand or something like that, explain how this went. One of the funniest things I'd ever heard was, uh, was it last year you had the LBJ movie? No. No. Um, no, that we had the... Oh, the JFK thing? Oh, no, JFK, JFK and LBJ. Oh, yeah, time about, for Greatness. About, about time the, for the, the documentary. Yes. About the civil rights. And that yes. woman two from, years ago. Okay. She went to ago. Wiley Bates mm-hmm. High right, School. Right, right. It was, it was two yes. years ago. Mm-hmm. And there was somebody at one of the one of the events was talking about, says, oh, yeah, I can't wait to go to see that LBJ movie because I'm always wondering about that whole transgender thing. And I'm like going, <laughs> I've got my, <laughs> I've got my head <laughs> cocked. I'm like going, okay. No, no, no. You're thinking of the LBJ. That's good, though. They actually think it's for everyone. We have LGBT. Yeah, we we do. Too. We do. I mean, um, you know, you're all of... laughing. I did. I just caught up to that just now. <laughs> I was laughing so too. Funny. Like I got it, and I just got but it. You'll laugh even more when I tell you who it was. But part that's of, uh... <laughs> part of our job from the beginning as the the two uh, the the co-founders and the festival directors, which people are always confused because there's two of us, but it's an enormous job, and we do complementary things together to make this happen. We were able to already dis- know certain areas that we can focus on that the community. It's part of our identity. So we always have a sailing film. We'll always have something with military. We'll always have an African-American experience. We'll always have a Jewish experience with bagels, locks, and coffee. Mm -hmm. We'll always have student Mm -hmm. showcase to show the work of emerging filmmakers. We'll always do an education day with county schools where we bus in three three to 600 kids to see As long as they work, continue to work with us. (laughs) um, And these are the ways that, so those become the tent poles that people know every year there's going to be these showcases. But then the rest is we get to sprinkle in everything that reflects the year we've had because life reflects art art reflects life so every year it changes and the slate changes and we're able to you know what our challenges bring are this in. you know i mean because we have a big vision we don't have a tiny vision we don't have a niche vision as no. you were saying yeah no you didn't we have you didn't, a, we didn't have come a big, in small we have a big vision and it's growing and so our biggest challenge is that we have a community that loves us, that supports us in every way. We need a lot more support. Financially. We need, we need a lot more financial support. But we have a city that loves us, but that can't hasn't yet been able to find a way to give us any money. So that's a problem as well, because most, team, festi- most film festivals are are um, supported by okay, their... Okay, so, all, so, so Alderman Budge, Alderman Payne, <laughs> Alderman Pendell Charles, Alderman Finlayson, well, Alderman they, Kirby. They, they know, <laughs> they know. We've spoken always, before them, and they're very supportive yeah. of us in many ways, and the mayor has been supportive. Both mayors have been very supportive since we've been here, and we know that we are a um, we are well-liked in there. It's just that we need money. Well, there's a, you, you bring an awful lot to the city, to be well, honest Well, we you, sat down and we showed them a PowerPoint and said, you may or may not know this, but we estimate we brought $2 million worth of revenue into the city in the last four years, in four days a year. Okay. What are you going to do for us? And you are, are paying an amusement tax, correct, no, or something? No. no? Okay, I no, didn't know we what license, that. We don't pay for We okay. license the films, though. I mean, I don't think people realize the things we do have to pay for. We travel. Every filmmaker and industry guest, we pay their airfare or their train ticket. We accommodate them and put them in a hotel for right. f- three or four and nights. And our hotel partners take care of a lot of that, but we end up paying for sure. quite a few hotel yeah. rooms as well. We provide parties at multiple venues, and we're it's catering, and it's booze, and it's all this stuff. We... Uh, also license each every feature film is licensed for the most part in some shorts even and now last year we traveled our first international guests from Buenos Aires and Copenhagen and we hope to do more of that in the future to bring more international guests here but all of and then we have to do tremendous signage marketing you know 
all of this, and we have this small but mighty staff. I think we actually probably have the best team we've ever had this year. How many people do you have on staff? Um, we have the, the structure is counting us. It's eight. Wow. Is it seven or eight? I think. Well, uh, it's eight, I think. So it's the two of us, festival directors. We have uh, Rich Henrich is festival producer this year, under us to sort of execute. Monica and Shorn is the director of programming. Derek Horn is festival manager, and he's also our shorts programmer. And then we have Mackenzie Pendry stepping into operations this year. Andrew LaHaye returns uh, as production coordinator, and then we have a new addition in Shelly Scow, who's doing programming coordination. So she handles print traffic and. Um, we're still lacking a, a, a basic tech person this year, which would be helpful. And then, okay, so you've got, you've got a basic staff, not a very big one. How many volunteers do you usually... That is what well, helps. <laughs> that now, now don't get too carried. I mean, we have volunteers for that weekend, right. uh, numbering about 225. Right. We have 400 on our list. Okay, but, so those are the ticket takers and the... Yeah, but everybody. The, the people that shushers. really are the, you know, what is it? We're the, the, we're the, we're the heart and the, the, the brains and they're the legs and the arms okay. and, the, and the eyes um, are our committee chairs. So we have a lot of committees and we have a lot of really dedicated committee chairs who are professional people that give a great deal of an amount of time to make this happen. Without them, Just, this festival sure. couldn't couldn't take place. Let's sure. put it that and way. Then, and then obviously you've got, you, you have a board of directors. We have a fantastic board of directors. Our president. All was, of them? Every single one of them? Everyone. You're not going to throw anybody under? Which we're not going to throw I'll anyone under one, the bus. One. One. Who there, is it? We're, we're not, we're not going to throw Booth. anyone under yeah. the bus. We oh, love John. John. John's the worst. But Lucy Spiegel yeah, is uh, the president of our board. She. This we is her John. third year as the president. She came from CNN as an executive. Mm-hmm. Um, when she retired, she came to us Don't as a board them. president. And she's um, been remarkable. I mean, she's helped really bring the board together, bring us all together, and kept the unit strong. And so we've been very fortunate to have her and a lot of new board members that are coming in every year. They're just It's really exciting that we have a board that's supportive and that is beginning to really understand what it takes to put a festival on. And well, you've done this all in five years, oh, four years, not quite five years. Well, yeah. we we set some goals for ourselves. Uh, we hit a few earlier than anticipated. Uh, some we haven't reached yet that we thought we would. Um, we we want to become. Can I say this? We want to become the best film festival in the Mid Atlantic region. There are a lot of festivals. There's DC Shorts and there's you know there's in AFI Baltimore's and been- but they're a little more nichey. Like there's either Shorts or there's Docs or there's this or there's the Jewish Film Festival and. Maryland is not our identity. Maryland is a very different animal. Um, We're very friendly with them, and they know who they are, and we know who we are. But we do think we attract a really different audience, so we have a more, little more global, worldly, cosmopolitan community, and we have different kinds of programming for that audience. But on top of it, we're we're doing something. This is the second year that this is really growing. Is that we really feel like we want to underscore the the relationship between technology and film. And so we're, again, going to have another tech talk. Our big sponsor from last year, Nimble Storage, is back. Like, what do you mean? So. Well, I'll tell you what. But let's, let's get into this year's film festival in a little bit. I'm gonna get, I want to get a cup of coffee. We're filling my cup of coffee right now. Why do you now. do this every episode? Why don't you just huh? keep your, your coffee filled the whole No, time? no. We need to get coffee. It's we'll, a bigger we'll, cup. We'll, 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 we'll be back in a second. In 2015, Anne Arundel Medical Center had to transfer more than 1,100 mental health patients to a mental health facility outside of this area for care because the facilities they needed do not exist in our own community. These patients and families are our friends, loved ones, and co-workers, and they deserve better. Join Anne Arundel Medical Center and presenting sponsor m and Bank on Saturday, April 29th in Annapolis at AAMC's Denim and Diamonds Bash. Denim and Diamonds is a wonderful evening under the stars, featuring fabulous cuisine, gourmet food trucks, silent auction and dancing, all to support expanding mental health care in our community. It's an evening of great fun, but it's not just a party. For tickets and sponsorship, visit aamcdenimanddiamonds.org. And we're back. That was uh, all about Anne Arundel Medical Center Denims and Diamonds, which was a great party two years ago. That was I remember fantastic. You were there. I was there. You were. I don't remember. I'm surprised you remember it. <laughs> I do. Remember. It was Have you guys ever been? 
No, but no. I love the title. Yeah, it's kind of neat. They put it in a it sounds real hokey, but they put it in a big old tent in a parking lot. Uh, but it's, well, it's, it's, it's spectacular. Cool. No, but it's phenomenal what they do. I mean, it's, when you say tent, I mean it's 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 like no, it's fifty thousand square feet. It's got it had food trucks. Yeah, it's, a it's, years it's, ago. it's 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 a big thing. But the uh, over there by the Annapolis Exchange on Jennifer Road, um, Uber at home. That's true. Mm-hmm. That's true. I remember I got thrown out of the Green Turtle the night that happened last time. <laughs> Teresa and I went over and had a nightcap after it ended. And, nightcap. And then it was, then it was like 2.30, and they're like, okay, dudes, you need to leave. I was like, I've never been thrown out of the Green Turtle. I don't know whether I should consider that a badge of honor or not. Amateur. Um, anyhow, so we were talking about the birth of the film festival um, and sort of the genesis of it, your board and everything else. And now uh, we are on the precipice of you guys losing your minds and bringing on the 2017 fifth anniversary of the Annapolis Film Festival. Big thing is the dates, the end of March, right? March 30 to April 2nd. Okay. Which is a weekend, long weekend. Thursday through Sunday. Right. How many films? I know you don't have your slate down, but how many films do you anticipate? 70 70 At the opening night is Thursday. That's the only film we show on Thursday, This at least still this year. We, that may change in the future, but right now, Thursday is opening night, and that film will be at 7 o'clock at Maryland Hall this year. Back home at Maryland Hall, so um, you guys have grown not just steadily but exponentially. Is there ever a point where you like you're looking at Annapolis going, oh, we're running out of venues? Um, oh yes, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a challenge every year because we create the screening venues. We have to enhance all the sound projection and screens at every venue. There's not a there's turnkey no movie place theater. anywhere. Well, I know the church, the church on there's West Street one, is there's wonderful. There's one in Eastport. I've always wanted to see, to see do something with but that. We I'd love but to that's have going a home to, there. That's an underdevelopment, right? right. Yeah. So. But you've got the church that you've you've used on West Street. Right. You've, I know you've used St. Anne's Parish House. Yes, um, we still do. Green Street Elementary yes. School gym mm-hmm. uh, and, and whatnot. And I, I know Hall. there's also the Maryland Theater for Performing Arts, which is on the horizon, yeah. um, which would be a, which would be a great venue yeah. uh, in probably year eight. <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing depending on how their fundraising goes. <laughs> yeah, eightieth. Well, well, and we have Maryland Hall, and we have St. John's Auditorium. Right. And the conversation right. room for for um, panels, and we also have O'Callaghan's for panels on Friday, right. and Ramshead in the morning on Saturday. So we we move it around. But the problem we've had is that we don't have a turnkey, as Lee just said, for movies. We don't have a movie theater. We don't have anything that carries, you know, that holds the the new digital DCP. Digital sound and and the, yeah, the that well, a lot of film festivals in in small communities they at least have one movie theater in their town. A one little that's one walkable, screen theater, and with- that can be their home base or that can be where they sent their their big first run movies do you miss the sound of the rattling of the film when it starts or is that just me that's just you yeah, yeah. <laughs> although like, i do like call them out call them it's like someone who says i miss the pops and hisses of vinyl you know? <laughs> yeah yeah no, um, right, you, you yeah I, I know about it because I've done the thing, but a lot of people haven't gone to a film festival before. Okay, you said panels and stuff like this. So this yes. is not all about like you know going well, in, sitting through a three hour movie. And then they're not three hours anyway. Let, popcorn no, and, but but it's more than that because it's really about engagement. So part of a festival is that you're not just watching the film. You get a chance to talk to the actor, the producer, the director, somebody there from the film, and you get to reflect on their work. And they're thrilled to have an audience to respond to their work. So there's this engagement that happens at the end of every film, mm-hmm. most, most films. films right. Well, I know. I remember last year, um, and I don't. I think his last name was Logan Miller. Yeah, is that, is that, was it mm-hmm. uh, young kid? Yes, was was there? Uh, I know. I spoke to several young ladies that were just like you did. totally Leo DiCaprio in all over him. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, he was he was in the uh, he was in the dark film with uh, he was James in the Con. waiting, which has now been released as the Good Neighbor. He right. was in two films. He was, and he was also in the in Nebraska Take one. Into the Water. He was in the Take Into the Water. Right. Right. Um, which was uh, you know f- phenomenal, and, and this was this is a young actor. He mm-hmm. was what maybe twenty, twenty three, twenty three. Okay, he was there. He was life. accessible to talk to. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's producers and everything mm-hmm. else, and, and you've got the the different uh, I'll say seminars, but the different workshops. Right, that- we do. Mm-hmm. We have usually four on Friday at O'Callaghan's upstairs in the Galway room, and then we have Ramshead two and one on Saturday or Sunday at the conversation room at St. John's. Right. And I, and I also find that the conversation amongst film goers is, 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 I mean, you know, I, okay. I watched La La Land the other night at, at Harbor Center and the movie ended. We got up and walked down the steps and went home. Yeah. Uh, and and that, that was the extent of it. Right. But I have never seen that 
here. I mean, people are milling about in the hallway and talking. Oh my God, did you see that? Did you think was that that was that was really cool? Or uh, that's the difference between a film festival was, and just going to. That's a movie. frame of mind you're in. Yeah, that's. Do you the ever see? You were just saying that you're going to Sundance. I am going to Sundance so, on next Thursday. Now, did there ever get a point with a film festival? And I've heard that with Sundance. I've never been to a large film festival, mm-hmm. but like I think Telluride is the is now the hot one. Is it's always been hot, but yeah, it's very small, but it's very is that the important. Point, is it the point that when it gets to like Sun, Sundance, where it's not, it's a film festival, but it's lost its cachet just because everyone's there and it's, it's not in Well, it's Sundance not is still the most important festival in the world. Hmm. It's, it's considered. More so than It's, yeah. It's okay. considered, well, it's considered the, the, um. American. The treasure, you know, the American treasure. Cannes and Toronto are the biggest and probably the most important in terms of market, you know. Um, like but licensing and, and yeah, and all selling, and films. selling, and all the yeah. big films that that are going there, and other. I mean, Berlin is big as well, but um, in this country, it all starts at Sundance. It, it's it's Sundance. Everybody tries to get into Sundance. They don't. It, it so sometimes like has Globes. a very quirky schedule. It's not always deciding what the greatest films are. You know, like anything, they have their they have their uh, the slate story. and their yeah. But they they have yeah. they have um, ideas of which direction they're going each year. They change it up, and you know, people want to be there. It, that's where you want to be seen. And then after that, there's South by Southwest, and there's Tribeca, and there's Telluride, and you know, these film festivals. I mean, there there are a lot of really top. A level film festivals, um, and then there are a lot of smaller festivals that are coming in that are picking up the slack because most films can't get into these festivals. There's so many films being made today, and that's my uh, point. So, so many films. So your innovation is going to be found really at the smaller ones. I mean, that, that I guess that that's my true. Point, well, that? we're it, we're never going to be a market festival. We're never going to be a Sundance well, here, but. But we know we're a networking festival where yeah, but compared that, to a point, big festival, if you're looking you, at the like where true film, like not true films, but I mean, there's there's a certain coldness to, I, I think, pure that, indie. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because I mean, do you have there's more channels than ever to get your your like you and I were talking, we started on three quarter inch, you know, but now, you know, I started in production 25 years ago. You know, you had a fifty thousand dollar tube camera, <laughs> right? And mm-hmm. now my my iPhone, which costs you know six hundred, can bucks, do the same thing. Can do it <laughs> better, a thousand times better. <laughs> right. So the tools that you had twenty five years ago are available to everybody right now. So exactly. anybody can be a filmmaker, and now, they can are. They be a good one. And so so fifteen years ago was the democratization of the technology. Starting five years ago was the democratization of distribution. Exactly. So mm-hmm. now there are all these platforms. There's Hulu. There's Amazon Prime. There's Netflix. Sure. There's YouTube. There's Vimeo. And they're the most There's, innovative, too. Yeah, right. well, you, so the marketing, the onus for the marketing falls on the producer because now there's a glut of content but you that have, you have you to have be heard. you have new marketing tools, too, with social yes, media. Yes, you do. You know, so you, you, have a, you don't have to spend a ton on uh, you know, print media. or right. you know, that you, If you're good, I mean, it's the whole Blair Witch effect. You but, know, but you, you know, can, the fact is it's still the, the, um, the artistic and the important – uh, filmmakers are going to rise from the pack right, of right. everybody that's shooting with their iPhone that has an idea. Right. I mean, you're going to get a lot more content now, but um, there's still going to be that cream that, that rises. And the top festivals are going to grab that cream, you know, right. and they're going to put it out there, um, you know, for everybody. And the smaller festivals and the newer festivals and a festival like ours, which really has an interest in becoming an important part of the festival scene. We're not we're not going to be satisfied with right. just being a little Local. regional yeah. festival. We do want to be more, but we're we're being smart about it. We're we're growing, you know, in a way that makes sense. That so you're becoming part of the festival conversation on a larger yeah. national scale. Exactly. We were excited we when that. we were written about by Script Magazine. Uh, they wrote but what wonder- magazine? Script Magazine wrote wonderful. Well, that's not the one I subscribe to. That's wonderful uh, <laughs> comments about the fact that you know when you go to a Tribeca, you know they march you know Ron Howard out on the stage. You never meet Ron Howard, but here you can just go to a party or on the street and approach somebody. It's much more intimate, and we always designed it to be that way um, because that's part of the experience too. We want it to be accessible to everybody. Well, that plugs you in as a, as, as the attendee. You're not just it's yeah. not passive that you actually no. are, are part of that. Right, you know, right. So th- that's part of the whole experience. And we're changing our, like this year, 2017, mm-hmm. our festival will be the same festival, but it will be different because we're, the way we're growing and the things that we're expanding and the thing, new things we want to bring in and the way we're looking at yeah. everything that we're doing 
it changes and, and it gets tweaked and, and improved. And that's what we're trying to do with it. We're well, very well it brings a, a new festival every single year. Yes, it's, right. It's, it's fresh. It's, it's, not, it's not the same experience. No. It's not like, okay, must walk to Maryland Hall. Must walk to, you yeah. know. It's um, fresh. How it's many fresh. events? Are, yeah, I just, I just came back from a board meeting where we have an event every year. And I just was looking at it. And it was basically the, 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 date, the date was changed at the top. And that after a while, there's no innovation. And it was, yeah. you know, it was for an alumni group, something like that. But I mean, See, We're always pushing the envelope here. I mean, we've been edgy with some of the films. I mean, we know just about how much we can push it in the community to, you know, part of our job as filmmakers are to bring the stories about the most relevant things. And I think there's a real need for film, film festivals now because a lot of stories aren't being shared out in the regular media in the world. And we're able to share them. They're wonderful films about really interesting topics that are relevant from all over the world. Well, I, I think I think a good film and, and I'll cite one from last year and I don't remember the name of the title was, but it was the um, they, they make you they can make you feel uncomfortable. Yes. Uh, well, and there was that, that child mm-hmm. that um, where the the village where the child the sexual predators were put. I don't remember. Oh, the yeah, title it was yeah, called, it was um, called um, the um, Pervert Park. Pervert, Pervert Park. Park. Right. And uh, it was just like a you know, very important there, film. Like, though. Oh, no, I mean that was a conversation yeah. that needed to be had. Yeah. It was, I mean, but we were talking to Gavin about this. Um, Gavin Buckley, who's running for, mm-hmm. for mayor, and yeah. he's the one who's being sued by, over by the city over the the um, yes over the murals. That was that was the. Uh, that was sort of the uh, thing, the, the mouth for your... Uh, yeah, but we, we took a lot of heat for that. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, I, I told Joe the other night, Joe Barson designs the logo yeah. for five years. Yeah. And the new one this year is absolutely it's phenomenal. Gorgeous. It made up for the one last year, I told right. him, because... <laughs> I took a lot of heat. For it. I, I didn't. I didn't particularly like it. I told. I told Jeff Huntington, who did right. the mural, that mm-hmm. I, I said I can't. St- I love that it's there, but I can't stand the actual mm-hmm. mural. Yeah. So if you're right. making a poster size, I'm not. Don't count on me buying, buying one. But, but my point with with uh, we were talking about Gavin is we were talking because of that mural because I said you know Annapolis is a very conservative town. I don't mean conservative politically. I mean no. conservative is they, Annapolis does not like change. It's, it's traditional. Tradition. Annapolis likes it's the, traditional. the, the yeah, later the it's... older middle aged people at the bars wearing their sperries after a day of sailing. Yeah. That's what the town likes. And I think there's there's a whole new type of, of of movement in town that's challenging that and is being deliberately provocative. And I think we need that. I think a film festival where you have these ideas so that it's not. It, it's it's stuff that makes you think. It's stuff that might offend you, but it's stuff that spurs a conversation. And, right. But that's our goal. Yeah, the, these conversations should not last four days. They should last three hundred sixty-five days. Mm-hmm. Right, and 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 longer. And right. and the fact is, is they have to be within the entire community. They can't just be in a little pocket of the community. One of the right. things that we this is why we do the African American experience because when we have. Um, white and black people together in that church for that Friday night it's event. Phenomenal. It is it's amazing. I mean two years ago we had it and the subject was you know about racism basically and when has in Annapolis, Maryland, one have has a community, has an audience that's was half black and half white for that, that particular event talked about that issue. Never. I mean, it's phenomenal. Never. Never. And, the, and we have to thank, you know, the community starting to wake up. I mean, we were approached by Asbury and they said, we want to be a partner with you. We want to bring people into this church because mm-hmm. we're the oldest African-American church built in 1803 and it's half on, uh, the community. Forest. No, it's on, it's West, on Street. West Street. Oh, okay. It's 80, right 87 West Street. Oh, and, okay. and, and they said half the community has never stepped foot in here. And they don't even know there's a museum on the third so, yeah, floor. Right. No, yeah, and, it's right next to level. A little one up, a couple doors up from level. Okay. And that's part of our history. And we have to honor all all of the history, mm-hmm. not just the white history, mm-hmm. all of the history. Right. Well, let, let's talk about the different venues. We talked about Asbury United Methodist Church, uh, and where, where are your venues this year? Do we do? Are, the are same, they nailed down? No, yes. the venues are the same. It's Asbury. It's uh-huh. going to be the St. Anne's Parish House. It's going to be the Green Street Elementary School, and it's going to be Maryland Hall and the Maryland Hall Gym. It's going to be the auditorium, the gym. We don't get it on Saturday because okay. they have another event in there. Okay, um, but Stupid it will be ballet. Thursday, Friday, Thursday, <laughs> no, Friday, and Sunday, review. and maybe the gym a little bit on Saturday, and St. John's, which we have on the weekend only, Saturday and Sunday. Okay, so those will be our screening event locations. Right. But then and we it, also have coffee talks every morning at Chesapeake Brew Company next right. to Lowe's. Coffee I can't talks. Think of that with the Saturday Night Live coffee talk with Paul Baldwin. <laughs> coffee That's, talk. Coffee talks are, are special unannounced guests each morning. Uh, uh, you get surprised every time you come in. Um, they're important people from the festival and you learn you get it's like inside baseball. You get to ask a bunch of questions about, you know, what was it like to work with so and so. I mean, we've had Oscar winners sitting in there. One year we had David Ward, who won the Oscar for the Sting. We had uh, Gabriella Cristiani, who was the editor for Bernardo Bertolucci, and they both are Oscar winners sitting there having coffee with They're everybody. They're talking about working with Redford. They're talking about working with. I mean, these are the kind of things. But the 
but the ba- back stories, the behind the scenes, funny little tales come out at, at Coffee Talk. There's a great Those... podcast called um, I Was There Too. It's fantastic. <laughs> it's a guy, he'll, he'll talk to someone who had a bit part in a movie for an hour. And it is, That's I tell funny. you, it is fascinating. It, like, it's the guy in Caddyshack when. Uh, when Bill Murray is, is telling the Dalai Lama story, and he's 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 the kid that he's got the pitchfork to the throat, by, and he's just telling oh the story. God. So they had an hour interview with that guy who's that scene, and I'm telling you, it, like, you're riveted the whole time. Funny. But his whole podcast is just one minor character from. He had one of the guys from Goodfellas, the guy that was in. He had like four lines, and he was the guy that that they was fro- He and his wife were shot in the car. It was the beginning of the montage. He was fantastic. We have a film this year that will highlight the craziness that happens when someone gets a little taste of fame right so this is about a character actor in hollywood Mm -hmm. i won't say the name of the film yet but Uh. it is hilarious it was hilarious to us because he suddenly he also has become the one of the world's most prominent sinatra impersonators right so his vision is he wants to have this anniversary and he wants to recreate sinatra's concert at madison square garden and it goes from this grand plan to and i know i know a guy who knows a guy who knows a guy that could help us and and they it's ridiculous it it is one very the people shooting the documentary end up producing the event because they can't get anybody to help it is hilarious if you want to be entertained about the business that is that's 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 one of the movies to see any other movies that we need to see we we have a we we are taking a movie um called jackson which is a, a very kind of hard-hitting film about a abortion clinic the the last standing abortion clinic in mississippi okay and it's about to be closed down and there's an internal battle and it really shows the the people who are trying to keep it opened you know and and the people who are the nice women community women southern women who are uh you know, for all the right reasons that they believe, are trying to say you you need to abstain. This is not the way to do it. Yeah. So, right. um, but it's also showing how their laws are being changed on a statewide basis, where there's a mandate that every abortion clinic has to have a hospital to go to for emergencies. Doing it in Texas too. So yeah. they're doing it everywhere, and basically. They're setting it up so the hospitals will not accept that role, and then it makes them not in compliance, and therefore they can and close down the clinic illegal. and so not provide care. It's a, it's, a, it's a runaround, is what it is. Yeah. It's, it's a runaround, and and this um, this is a it's a very important film, particularly in light of everything that's going on. Um, and it's a young filmmaker, uh, right. and she's we hope she will be coming too. So, what well, is the division right now? You have, I mean, not to get the politics of it, is I, I, you've, I've never seen. In my life, such an ideological division between regular Americans, and, and and the worst part is that people don't want to see each other on both sides. I'm not doing a false equivalency, but on both sides, no one wants to see the other person's view or, no. or the reasons. So well, there's no, this I'm saying this is so this important. is an important film because, because it, you may not agree with right. the, the, the hard bent of this film, but the fact is, it's just like any of these other films. We have to be. We have to know what's going on because this film shows how both sides. That's what I. It's a saying. fantastic it shows how job. both sides feel right. and what they think and why they yeah. think it. It's not like you're the bad guy and you're no, the good guy. It's these are real feelings that systems they have. battling. Right. And we were really impressed. We saw this film in New Orleans at the film festival there. Yeah. This filmmaker is a 26 year old girl named Maisie Crow, and it's her that's first feature. Name. And she did an amazing job of walking that journalistic line right down the middle and showing fairly both sides of the story. So um, we were. Well, again, it, goes, it. it goes back to what we said way at the beginning of this is it, it's the story. Right. It's, it's all, all it's about, all the, about story. the story. We have another story about a guy from Hyattsville, African American gentleman who's yeah. a jazz artist, mm-hmm. and he befriends the KKK That's in right. Maryland. I, I, you know, I read about that. That's amazing. Like one person at a time that he's getting people to leave the, the all the through place. conversations yeah. and relationships. He's a really cool guy. Yeah. I read all about him. Okay, so you guys are gearing up to go into your crazy, crazy time right about now. The website will be, it is up, but it's sort of reflective of last year. It's um, about to And you really flip. should go, you should really go check that out and, and see, because of some of the fun stuff that did happen last year and some of the films that were there, it, yeah. was, uh, it, was, it was really great. It's going to be updated fairly soon. Yes, and and I I'm very hopeful. Um, certainly, when I get back from Sundance, uh, we're going to be, um, I think, bringing this to a, a close and 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 
actually being able to announce our slate in early February. Yeah, the we're website hopeful. Is, um, uh, the uh, website will go up in... The website is annapolisfilmfestival.com. All right, and you have uh, yeah. Facebook and Twitter? We have a vibrant Facebook and Twitter, but if you want to sign up for our weekly e-blast, go to the homepage and look for a little orange flag on the bottom. It says... What does it Sign say up there? for our weekly email. Yeah, yeah. Something, you click something, on something it. original. Subscribe like that, me. So, yeah. It says subscribe me, and you click there, and you just put your email address. And, and when is our website going to be updated? It's, we go live with everything March first. We um, will roll out all tickets available, and like last year, you can also buy tickets on Facebook and look for trailers to also appear on Facebook. Right. You no, can buy you, passes now, though. I mean, soon. Yes, pass. I would suggest you get them very soon. We sold okay, out no, of our pass holiday. Get, pass gets you the whole kit and caboodle, right? All of, all of your movies. Mm. Be careful and, how you say that. Mm-hmm. It, okay. it is a general festival pass there are different levels of all access for all the parties right. and everything else but it costs okay. a lot more but a, a general festival pass would get me into unlimited films and unlimited panels. films except for the opening night i think well no or, if you actually if you get there in queue i mean it's it's de- definitely general admission first come first right. serve right but that does get you in the opening night film opening night after party which is our big community right. party and that gets you into best of the fest which we're gonna have a big awards ba- uh event where everybody this year. votes for the and just so you also i think it's interesting to know that we are doing our big after party on opening night at the Boys and Girls Club gym this year. Oh, that's and awesome. so it's right across from Maryland Hall. And we, we're very excited about being able to bring the community. We're going to turn that place into an incredible uh, film festival party. The one thing that is really very cool about the Annapolis one, too, I think, is that it's so walkable. Okay, you've got Maryland Hall, you've got the Boys and Girls Clubs right, right. down there behind Bates. Uh, coming down West Street, you can go from one festival, to one, one location to the next in maybe 10 minutes. Um, yeah. Very walkable. We will also have the little Boys and Girls Club buses that will be trucking everybody around town ah. this year. They're a wonderful partner. Uh, mm-hmm. Again, we just want to thank the community for everybody helping so much to give so much to make this happen. We could not do this. And I just want to say, that's point important. out that April Nyman and the Arts Council have mm-hmm. been they have been just completely 100 percent behind yeah. day us one. from day one and we just could not do this without them it's been great but i mean I, I am looking forward to the annapolis film festival march 30th to april 2nd and i at least just not blowing smoke up our butts about buying the passes now because they probably will sell out um it is they will um, there's a it, limited it, it is, number it is a busy event it is a busy mm-hmm. four days it's gotten huge over the last uh, few mm-hmm. years I um, just sold. you can buy individual tickets to individual shows absolutely. if you want to see is, them absolutely um but again if you if you have an interest in seeing you know three or more movies over mm-hmm. the weekend i would probably say a day pass or a full festival pass would be the way to go is my suggestion well, the full festival pass gets you into that you know uh, at least uh, if you're in there on time to opening One, night right. and to the after party at opening night there too. last year we could not sell tickets to opening night so if you don't get a pass you're probably not going right well so, we will have a we will have a rush line for opening night because a lot of times sponsors people and people who up. have it people don't actually show up right. so then people will be able to be seated right. if they're in the rush line even for the big sponsors they still have to arrive a certain amount of time beforehand because we do need to start on time and see people right. on time so you would have a chance if you got in the rush line you might get in there'll probably be i don't know 20 people that don't right. show right. we're going to have a big right. opening night we can't tell you right now what the film is going to be but it's going to be uh, good look on your desk on the way out. <laughs> I'll, I'll look, that little red folder says, don't let anybody see. But, don't let John see. But, hey, uh, you know, guys, thank you for taking the time out. I'll let you go to send it, Sundance, uh, and you can continue you. to hold down the chaos here, Lee. <laughs> okay. uh, are you going to Sundance, too? No? Okay, with the Not pouty face. Maybe next With the pouty year. face. Uh, the Annapolis Film Festival, coming into Annapolis. You should be here March 30th to April 2nd this year. Tickets in probably about a month. AnnapolisFilmFestival.com will give you all of your information. And we are here with the two festival directors, Lee Anderson and Patty White, at Filmsters in West Annapolis. And that's going to kind of wrap it up for us for this week, I think. Absolutely. Are we done? Looking forward to it. Where are we? We are at... MD Crafts Podcast on Twitter. You can find us uh, at uh, Facebook. Uh, we have a page and we have a group. Um, the group's getting a little bit more active. Uh, you can send us an email at info at themarylandcrafts.com. We've gotten a bunch of emails lately with some really good suggestions and some mild criticisms of John. Uh, you can find John oh, at Ian Annapolis on Twitter and you can find me at Tim Hamilton 47 on Twitter. And that is where you'll find us. So, ladies, thank you very much for having us here. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks yeah. for having us. We All enjoyed right. it. See you at the festival. Talk, Talk movie, movie to, to me. me. This has been the Maryland Crabs Podcast with Tim Hamilton and John Fernay. Sure to follow them in all the regular places Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and online at themarylandcrabs.com. Take a moment to rate us on iTunes. Now, get the hell out of my kitchen. Seriously. Go!
You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.